Welcome back, everybody, to Hermitcraft. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to Dex. Wait a minute. Wait, well, hold on. Hold oh, the camera control still evade me. Hi. Apparently, we're not in a mushroom biome anymore. What the what? Like, what? Where did you even come from? Is this mushroom fields? Mushroom fields. Where are you guys spawning from? Get exploded. Okay. All right. Apparently, we got to do some lighting up here. Welcome back, everybody, to Hermitcraft and what will be the entrance to Decked Out. We are going to work on this today. It's very ugly right now, but it will soon get much better. I have much to show you today, and we have much to do today. Today is going to be another big day of Decked Out. Amazing progress. Look at this. I dug all out below the main hall, and I added these little item drop-off things for all the hermits here. So hold on. Let me show you up top here what's going on here. Every hermit now has a little uh, a little deposit box, if you will, here. And when they put something in there, the uh, right there, the little light turns on, so that you know other hermits know that they've dropped something off in there. Because this is going to be used for the uh, the auction, the the item auction, which we're going to do today. But more importantly, down here now, I can just come down here and look to see who's got a light on, and know who drops stuff off, and I can get the things, and I can just put the sign here and know whose thing is. It's, it's like underground maintenance. I've also opened up this redstone area quite a bit. We got the full item return system here for uh, cards that are being processed. They swoop up there, so whether it's a card that was processed through here or whether it was something that was just ignored, it's gonna go up there and go back into your deck up there. Speed boost cards are now uh, hooked up with the redstone, the red line here. Check it out. We got a little thing over here that swoops up over here, and this little glorious piece of circuitry with clocks and magic and happiness right here. Uh, basically, the more uh, the more speed boost cards you have, the more tiers of speed boost cards you have, the more this beacon will be uh, exposed and uh, give you a little speed boost action. I've also got placeholders hooked up for Loot Finder and for Soul Seeker. I still need to hook those up. I'm kind of procrastinating because those are a pain. Uh, but we got the feast, the new feast card hooked up now, and that one goes up on the purple line up there. So basically, oh, spoilers, hang on, I haven't gotten to that part yet. Uh, up here, as you enter, there's going to be like a little uh, water thing here. So uh, let me see if I can right here. Yes. Uh, this one here is going to hold the picks. I think I'm just going to give everyone like a wooden pick. Uh, and this one is going to have some food. I'm not sure the quality of the food yet, but however many tiers of feast you have, you will get one of the pieces of food in here to help you maybe uh, regain some of your health. And those items there, including the pick, are just going to fall out of here. Bloop. And be, I said bloop. There we go. And be just waiting for you when you enter the dungeon. Now, what I'm most excited about right now is to show you the couple new rooms I've designed here. The first one is the library, and I love this one because it's got like a great little dark atmosphere here. So basically, we've got this dark library with a lot of wood trimming and stuff like that, and six little alcoves here. Each one of them has a lectern, and there, you know, who knows, there might be something written on these books. Who, who can say? Uh, we got little ladders here to help you get to the to the tall books because you know that's important for short people. All right, we got some like some of them are like dark with like a little, little flower pot there. Some of them are bright, and then this right here is going to be definitely a uh, a potential. I know it's like super dark here for now, but I'll light this up for now. Um, there's going to be like a potential soul uh, soul flame here that you can extinguish. If you guys remember the whole soul flame mechanic, but yeah, this is the library. Absolutely loving this. It's a dead end, so if you come in here, you got to make sure that uh, nobody's chasing you. And then we've got the, I don't even know what to call them, the, the prison cells, the jails, the, the cell block, whatever it is. This is where, this is where the, the castle keeps its prisoners in here. We have this, like, uh, what is it, eight little cell areas with, you know, some random random people who, yeah, they, they didn't make it. They didn't make it because they just weren't cut out for, uh, for prison life, you know? Little cobwebs, another little villager here. He had a sad day. Uh, they've got their little cup. You know what they use that cup for is their own. And then just you know, yeah, it's just some people. They just they just can't they just can't cut it with prisoner life. We got one guy in the back here who looks like he escaped there. I don't even know how he got out there, but looks pretty suspicious in the back there. But this is the prison area. Who knows? There may be a secret or two in there as well. 
Now, last video, we made this amazing twinkle, twinkle nether star area, which has turned out amazing. I still got to get some more nether stars in here. But uh, due to the overwhelming amount of feedback, you guys let me know. And I was just a complete derp. I don't know. I didn't think of it. But I added, I took out the item frames on the spawner here. So it helps a little bit. You, you know, you do lose that border. So it looks a lot better. But the color still doesn't match that great. I don't know. Maybe it'll look better once I take the torch out. But either way, I'm happy with that. I don't feel the need to do anything else with the spawner. So it's sufficiently hidden for now. I like it. Uh, and we we have our polar bear back in here. We got Aurora Berealis. I mean, he's he's amazing. Underneath the card sorting system here, where the redstone is that handles your input costs and everything, down here in all this redstone soup, I've added a little a five minute cooldownificator here, right there. So basically, when someone takes their shulker box out of the dungeon holder thing over there there's going to be a five minute timer before anyone can use the dungeon again and we do that just by simply spitting an item onto this pressure plate waiting for that to uh for that to rot now the reason for that is so that i can guarantee that any items that they dropped in the dungeon will actually decay or rot or disappear despawn whatever the word you want to use is in the dungeon and that actually leads to an interesting point a, a very common question i've been getting about decked out is that hey if someone's in here and they pick up some artifacts and they're on their way out and a ravager eats their face they're gonna drop those artifacts and they're gonna despawn and yeah i'm totally aware of that that's actually intentional i'll know which ones they take based by which lodestones have been uncovered and all that so i'll know which artifacts need to be replaced and speaking of artifacts we have more sets that we've added so i think this one yeah this is the old original six artifact sets that i've done these are gonna be like so we have a dragon set i've added the uh the dragon's breath there now you'll see i have way 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 more of each quantity here it's going to be like unique rare uh uncommon common okay and this is I, I'm, I just got uh, like tons of extra of everything just in case, like I said, I need to replace some of them. But we got the dragon set, the wither set, the ocean set. We've got the end set, which is, I got the shulker head there, which is kind of nice. We have the nether set, which I changed up a little bit. It's got the uh, the respawn anchor mini block there. A lot, a lot of really cool blocks here. We got the shiny set with all the bling bling. And then this is all the new sets. And, and they're not done yet, but they're just about done here. We I have the B set, which I think is really cool. We have... The, the beehive and the honeycomb and the honey block. We have the witch set. Which, and th these are all arbitrary, just fun groupings for sets for the players to collect here. Be uh, the witch set's got the witch head, mini block, the brewing stand, the cauldron, all this stuff. The enchanting set, we're still missing the bottle of enchanting here. Impulse is going to get that for me. We added the poison set, which I think is kind of humorous with the poison potato being the unique there, really cool. And then we added the villager set with uh, golem heads and bells and anvils and hay bales and stuff like that. So I think we're up to what, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sets. So rough, I need roughly one set for each player that wants to enter the game. So I'll probably, I'm hoping I still need a few more sets. One of the other common questions I get a lot is, won't the Ravagers that are loose in the dungeon, won't they be stepping on pressure plates and won't they be generating clank as well? Answer to that is yes, they will actually. And it's, I don't see that as a bad thing, honestly. I kind of see that as they will, they will generate a lot less clank because they move around a lot less frequently and shorter distance than the players. So they'll generate a lot less clank, but they're your incentive to not kind of linger and hide in the dungeon for 20 minutes waiting for the Ravagers to move away or anything like if you're standing still Clank is slowly still going up a little bit so you got to keep moving and since we're talking about Ravagers now might be a good time what do you say I think we should get our Ravager our greeting committee up in its cage up there this is going to be interesting uh they're already in minecart so i'm going to just snag one of those and build a minecart track that will drop him up there i think i gotta figure out how to get him out of the minecart though that's the bigger issue uh, let me see what i can do suddenly i'm happy that i have eight ravagers because i may kill one right here or it may kill me who knows but we have a little cart track here that's going to take the ravager up behind the library up above into the ravager cage here so he's the goal is i want him like pressed right up against these iron bars just looking down at everyone in there and obviously he can't get out so what have i done here i got powered rails all the way up i have a an activator rail right here so that when he gets in here he'll be like he'll be boinked out of the cart and i think he's gonna be like pushed over here so i took some blocks out at his eye height so that he doesn't suffocate my plan is he's gonna come over here pop out right there and then i've got this little area back here i'm going to put water like right there and it's going to go one two three blah, 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 blah. and hopefully 
push them, push him like away from the blocks and up against the bars. I don't know if that's gonna work. We're gonna have to improvise. Okay, I just want to make sure here that the track is bending in the right direction here. A little power rails. Zip it on down there. His name is The Beast. Here we go. Please work, buddy. Please work. Let's go. Let's go greet him and see how this works. Whoop. Up here we go. He's gonna fly. Oh, he's gonna come eat my face. Let me, let me, let me hold on. Hang in here. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, please tell me you're coming up. You better me. Okay, here he comes. Here he comes. Shroop. And. No. No. Okay, okay, okay. Everybody's good. Everybody's happy. We're cool. <laughs> he wants to eat my face. Okay. Uh, water bucket now. And. I just want to make sure that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to drip anything down below there. Okay, here we go. Uh, this should magically push him into the center. Go. It's not magically pushing him to the center. Okay, no, that's not bad. He's got like a thousand and eight hundred and negative thousand billion health. So, <gasps> there he goes. Okay. Uh, did it? No. <laughs> okay, now to replace some of this black stone, I think. Oh, oh, don't get angry at me. Just calm it down there. I gotta do this right there. Oh, but now there's rails down there. Oh, wait, my water probably washed them out. Yeah. The water washed him out. Uh, 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 flint and steel. And flint and steel acquired. Okay, all I need to do now is light these fires. Please don't jump on this and burn. I, they can't fit up here. So I know that we are safe here, I think. And then I just got to cover this up in the back. Come on, I'm a block short. Uh, I'll, I'll take this cracked one. Just give me that. No one can see this anyways. All right, let's go see what it looks like in the front. Oh, oh no, the minecart's still up there. <laughs> I forgot to get the... Okay, uh, let's see if we can get that minecart out without getting it... Turning into a Ravager snack. Uh, hi. How's it going? How about... Eh? Oh, we got a lever there too. Yup. Okay, you can have all that stuff. You can chew on that minecart and that lever all you want there, big guy. All right, let's see how he looks now. Come on, come to the front. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, that is amazing. Love it. Okay, now that we got the greeting committee in up there, it's time to make some crazy progress. I want to work on this area here. This whole area, like, so, like, I call this the main hall where everyone's scoreboard is and everything. And then in here, this is kind of the... This is the dungeon prep room or whatever. I don't know what you call it. But right out here, I have a lot of work to do. This room and what's going to go all down there is, I mean, I don't have a really good name for it. The management area. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to have like the auction system built here. And that's that's kind of manual, unfortunately. I'll, I'll talk about all these as we get to them. Uh, but down here, I'm going to have a couple steps down. We're going to have a shop. We're going to build this today, a redstone shop where hermits can buy items for a set amount of uh, of coins or currency and then over here is going to be a brand new system that i'm coming up with it's a new way for hermits to get uh compasses and keys to the dungeon and stuff like that uh and then down in the back is going to be the trade-in system for hermits to upgrade their cards the idea is if they if they have three tier one cards, like a stealth one, a feast one, and a whatever, loot finder one, and they don't want them, they can throw them into the machine and get a random tier two card. So that's kind of a way to improve their deck over time. Oh yeah, I've been building for a while here, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with how this, this first room of like this management section or whatever i don't even know what to call this but it's looking good it's looking real good we got this sidewall over here nothing 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 functional over here on the side here just some decorations and stuff to carry it this right here again is where you put in your uh what's going to be a dungeon key I'm, I'm gonna move away i think from paying emeralds to go into the dungeon instead it's going to be a key that you get that i award for various purposes this is for various design reasons but mostly i want you to use your emeralds to uh for fun things not just to keep playing the game uh entrance to the dungeon here of course the lights will light up when someone is in the dungeon when it's active and then this back wall is the important one this is the daily auction place your bid in the barrel at your scoreboard again referring to the barrels you know over here that the uh, players just drop drop whatever emeralds they want in there um i think i might call them coins by the way i'm not sure Still not sure what the currency is and everything, but anyways, it's the daily auction. I will update this, and then the, whoever bids the most 
in their barrels with like a kind of a silent auction will win this item. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to get it to him yet. That's another system I may build here. But this wall over here, I, I think I like this wall the best here. These banners, by the way, these are temporary just to remind me that I want to put banners here. I know what design I want. I'm going to make a custom banner, but I don't have time right now. So these are just placeholder, the ominous banners here. But... The real focus of today is down here, okay? We're gonna add a ton of redstone. We're gonna add the shop and the new compass and dungeon key distributor system and the trading system. Let's get busy. Yeah, hallway done, hallway's done. Okay, so that, there's no redstone yet. There's no redstone yet, that's not done. That'll be coming next, but this is what I wanna show you guys for how it's gonna work. There's three major components down here so let's see we'll start with we'll start with ye old shop <laughs> this is where the players can come uh, buy items that i put up for sale when an item is up for sale there will only be one of that item for sale this is not a renewable shop so when they buy an item this slot will then become empty this light will turn off so here i got to purchase an item place the required coins in the barrel so if i wanted to buy the super fancy block for 10 coins i would put 10 coins in here and i think those will just be emeralds renamed to be called coins or something i don't know yet um and when the item is available the light will turn on uh when the item is bought then the light will turn off letting you know that it is no longer available when an item is no longer available i will uh i will replace it maybe the next day maybe not maybe two days later i don't know whenever i get to it hopefully soon um the items up here though will just be like demo like fake items or something but basically i think this is going to be like cards mostly lower tier cards maybe some lower tier artifacts i'm not sure on that yet though but the cool way this is going to work now you put your coins in and then the items are actually going to come up through the floor right here i'm going to have a bubble vader like a, a five wide bubble vader here and the items are going to like float up from the bottom so if you're just standing on top of the carpet here bloop they'll just go right in your inventory and it tells you right there stand on the carpet to get the to get the block so that's the shop and i think that'll be pretty cool and across the hallway is the compass ticker which is the worst name ever i have no idea what to call this thing but basically this is like this is like mumbo's button game kind of except you want it to get to the end so here's the deal uh lamps will light up over time when all are on a button will appear so these will like slowly lights will turn on and when that fifth one turns on this right here will lift up it'll look like bam it'll it'll swoop up like that and then oh, there's a button right you press the button ba bam okay and immediately this will the 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 piston will go back down again locking it back out and the timer will reset and it's going to be about a six hour time so like once every six hours hermits can come in here and press this button and when they do from the floorboard here same system same bubble vader uh they'll be able to get a compass and a uh a, a dungeon key sorry i forgot basically it's as if they it's another source of compasses instead of going up into the uh shopping district and looking for them or if they're have, having trouble finding some in the shopping district they can come by here and kind of see oh we're only one tick away maybe i'll camp the button and press it and they'll get a compass and a dungeon key that way then over here on the right this is kind of just like a half little it's not even a redstone system or this is the system item return this is for all of the lodestone compasses shulkers whatever else that i provided by the game that uh that i need back mostly the lodestones i really need those to be turned back so i'm hoping that the hermits just throw them in the box there they'll go in a chest down below there and get sucked up by a hopper and stuff but i can reuse them at least which is something i really will need to do and then finally at the end of the hallway this is one i'm very pleased that this is automated this will be automated with redstone i was afraid i was gonna have to do this manually but here's what it, the way it's gonna there's three trade-ins here okay over here is the art of fact trade in so if you guys remember the rules you can only have 12 items on your board there your, your board out in the main hall there and if you have a 13th item which will happen probably fairly quickly you have to decide what to keep and the rest you have to put here and do artifact trade in or i mean you could trade them to other hermits of course but uh if you do artifact trade in here and each one you press the button for it it'll verify that it is an artifact and it will give you one coin Basically, it's just a little token to give them, just to incentivize them to not hoard them, even though it's against the rules. But I'm also going to make it a one in nine chance that they'll actually get a dungeon key. So they'll get a free run at the dungeon, potentially, when they return their artifacts. 
And then these two here, these are the really fun ones. So basically you have common card trade-ins and uncommon card trade-ins. So with the common cards, you give three common cards and put them in here, press the button once for each card, boop, boop, boop. And the, the reason the button's there is because the way the redstone works, I needed to do it that way. Um, but it will verify that three rent, that three, uh, all, all the cards are common, and if so, it will spit out a random uncommon card. So basically, you can promote lower cards up here. So three commons will turn into a an uncommon. Three uncommons will turn into a rare. And I don't think I'm going to do the rares up to artifacts and stuff. I think I'm going to stop there. So we're just going to have those two trade-ins for cards. So I'm super excited about this whole hallway. I think I think this is where a lot of the gameplay takes place, and it's going to be really cool for Hermits to come in here every day, check out where the lights are, see if they get a free dungeon key, see what's for sale, maybe strategize on what cards to hand in, that kind of thing. But let's get busy on the redstone now. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the shop first. Let's get that working. And there we go, there we go. The redstone for the shop is done. Not too hard on this one. My, ma my main goal with this one was I wanted it to be one wide tileable. I knew I wanted to sell up to like a maximum of five items which I've got here but I didn't want to take up you know 10 15 blocks long or anything like that so we have a one wide tileable which meets my goals and it's a single purchase this is only going to work work for single purchase but pretty straightforward stuff it's kind of using like a sorting mechanism here so if you guys remember in that second slot over there I had a uh, super fancy rock for sale for 10 coins so this hopper right here okay is is say, say these uh these iron nuggets are coins now when that gets to 42 then I'll have a signal length three down here. It'll just go kick this repeater, which will toggle both these torches, and therefore it'll lock the hopper, but turn off the light. So it'll stop accepting more coins. Um, and when it does, it'll also power through here, and you'll see right there is my super fancy stone. So I can set the price of the items that I want to buy by simply subtracting the cost of the item from 42. Okay, so in this case, I'm selling for 10, so I, I'm at 32 right here. So obviously, I can't sell things for more than 42 items, but that's that shouldn't be a problem. So what I do now is say say I'm generous, and I'm just like, bah, whatever, I'll put some coins in there. This should stop at 5. There it is. It turned off, and the super fancy rock went into my inventory. The light turned off. Absolutely perfect system. I love it. The only thing I don't like now is you can actually see the water bubbles below here. That. And the big one is done, the trade-in system. I'm I'm exceptionally pleased with how this one turned out. So I'll show you how, they're all identical, just obviously the content is different and what they test for. So I'll show you on the uncommon trade-in here. For, for instance, this one here, if you put in three uncommon cards, in here and then press the button three times once for each card it'll keep track of how many uncommon cards you've handed in and once you hit three it'll uh it'll swoop out a rare card out the uh, there's like a little water stream right there and it'll fly right over and fall on the ground if you put in something that's not one of the you know items in question in this case an uncommon card it'll like uh, what was smithing tail nah and it just it just shows up right there there it is boom so let me show you how the redstone works here. It's uh, it's pretty long, but I wanted to keep it narrow so that I could fit three of them pretty close together. So this works out with an interesting little trick here, which is kind of cool. So the item you put in here, right, we'll say redstone dust is one of the cards. I have a chest right there, okay? And now this holds all of the items that I can say these are cards, right? Redstone dust, blah, blah, blah. I, I would obviously put real real cards here, you know, and then we just have like uh, whatever filler items here if there's empty spaces. The card, you press the button and the card will go into this hopper here. These guys are all locked for a little bit, so it just tries to put it into this chest. If it goes in, it'll count as one of your, one of your, uh, you know, towards your progress, toward matching your set of three. If it can't go in there, then this hopper unlocks and then it's just like, and it goes down there. Um, and then all this stuff basically just says, hey, did it go in that chest or did it go down that chest down there? Um, and it works out pretty good. So let me show you how this works here. For instance, we have like redstone and what was it? Quartz and ice. So I'll do two redstone. So I'll do this. It took one of them, took another one here and one more. And we should hear ding. And no, just we got a set of three. Boop. There's my item, which happens to be another word. Obviously, that would be a random, uh, a random rare card that I put into this guy right here. Okay, so I unfortunately am out of time. We got a huge amount done. This whole wing was completed, redstone and everything. We got our Ravager guy up at the top there. What we didn't get to today, as usual, we didn't get to the stairs. I will have this done by next episode. I can almost guarantee that high up there. But the real issue is building. I would say I'm only like 30% done. Oh no, Zuma's on, I have to log out. <laughs> Mernin. 
That's our that's our word for whatever reason that's stuck. Uh, we're only like 30% done with the dungeon area. Like, granted, that's the hardest part back there, so that's, I'm glad that's done. All of these little rooms here will go quick, but we still have a lot of buildings to do here. Now, the area in the back with the Blackstone, I'm... I'm holding off on that because uh, Blackstone is going to be part of uh, Piglin bartering in 116.2. So I've been kind of stockpiling the gold because I don't want to dig. I need a tremendous amount of Blackstone to build this area. So that means I'm probably going to start really focusing on building the nether section here and the keep out. So expect a lot of progress on those real soon. Redstone wise, we're looking really good. I'd say we're 75, 80% done with Redstone now. I got to do, like I said, a couple more lines there and stuff which are going to be tedious um but obviously getting that whole stealth thing and getting the evokers to move around on mine carts and stuff that's going to be very tricky and probably take a lot of time so lots to go still but guys i gotta thank you so much for all the positive feedback and comments you guys have been leaving it's really encouraging me to keep going here i know this is a massive project i know we have a lot more to go and i know it's kind of really focusing on my channel lately but I'm really enjoying this, and you know, you guys are encouraging me to keep going, so I really, really appreciate that. And uh, there should be some gaming district stuff coming up with Etho very soon. I know I've been saying that, but this time, for real. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. <laughs>